has been hit. It's been hurt. Hurtin. Gehut. Oh my, what are you doing? You're gonna make you're gonna make right. everybody regret being here on time. That's by right. This, like you never... weird sound in their head. You know what they say when you're late, better late than on time or early. <laughs> right? No. I don't think anyone says that. <laughs> I guess if you're going for that fashionably late crowd, then I guess they say it. No. But I think most people in life no, speak, don't believe that. Speaking of tornado sirens, we had some strange weather yesterday. It was humid, it rained at times, and it was hot, and then there was also lightning. And Meridian said she heard thunder. I never heard thunder, but she, she said she heard thunder. Oh, there was thunder yesterday morning. You heard thunder? In the morning, yeah. Oh. It was delightful. Oh. I guess I missed it. You were asleep. Mm, I was. <coughs> That's a good place to be. Um, <clears throat> mm. Well, I, I would guess a real tornado siren would have to be very annoying, wouldn't it? Because they really want to want you to get up and move, you know, so that you can be safe as you watch your entire life's fortune be destroyed um as i guess I happens to one know, in every 20 people i think over no, the course of their lives no. that live in the midwest um but what is interesting is that i didn't actually really grow up with tornado sirens yeah. even where i was because we were so rural there mm -hmm. was no way that a siren could reach all of us well, why didn't so. they just in you know put one in because it's so rural, where would you put it that it would actually just, reach I mean, everybody? It seems like you determine how far a siren can be heard from, and where it starts to get a little muddy, you put another one. That would be far too expensive to warn like the five people. It's yeah. So I didn't actually grow up with a lot of tornado sirens. We did have like sounds that would go off at school that were special for tornado drills and things like that. Honestly, it's amazing to me you live with anything above ground. Right? You just resign yourself to your fate and dig yourselves a little burrow, a little warren. Oh, that would be cute. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to have a tree house, though. <coughs> <coughs> oh, a tree house. <coughs> that would be nice. Um, for those who are joining wondering this is uh june 23rd i got uh, COVID on june 1st and i'm still not better um he's negative for COVID. oh yeah uh, let's put it that way yeah so, yeah so been like negative for like a week and a half at this he's point he's better that way yeah. just not mm. in like the whole being able to breathe without coughing way uh. i on the other hand i, I think i'm fine yeah, no, Jesse's fine. Ah, man, as you can see. Um, <laughs> but no, those air raid sirens, goodness, even worse. And it hasn't been too hot here, so. Or if it has, we've been inside the whole time. <laughs> I don't know. It's freezing. By the it's time hot. we go out. This room is nice, but it's freezing. This room is a freaking sauna. Like, it could be cold outside, and this room is like, every ounce of heat in the house is going to get trapped in this one room. It's really it's, nice. Oh my gosh, it's like our coat closet downstairs, where it's like, it's either freezing cold or very hot in that, in that closet. It's never in between, and I feel like this room is an extension of that. Yeah, it's a peculiar thing, too, because we got a lot of coats in there. And it gets freezing in there. Yeah, you'd think that the coats would... Provide a wall of insulation? Yeah. No, they don't. I mean, that's what they're supposed to do anyway. That's why we put them on. Um. <laughs> uh. All right. Are you ready? <coughs> Are you ready for the poll? <coughs> yeah. Five minutes in. Yeah, let's do this poll. And I will I'll say, tell I you think... about my dream. Before or after the poll? After the poll. Okay. Um, 
David and I were very happy with how this poll ended up being set up. Like we worked um, last Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. We we sat down and like mapped out systems, um, partially because we're we're fresh. Um, oh yes, it is. It's a shrewd historic beet farm shirt. Mm. Um, but partially because we were fresh off that whole, we can't take any votes back ever. Yeah. And so we were like, we got to make sure all three options are something we want, especially since what they were voting on, uh, our patrons were voting on um, potential case systems. And so we needed it to be good. Um, and I believe both of us were very happy with all three options. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, then don't tell me because I am. And all right, we do have a winner. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna start with option A, which is the two basic and two derived. Yeah. By the way, um, we discussed it and got rid of this one. That's why it's in red. Yeah. Uh, so that wasn't a part of the vote. Um, we did leave it there though for the as we you know produced the PDF from the episode that you know you could see it was an option. Mm -hmm. It was just taken away. Mm -hmm. um, and so two basic and two derived where um, locative and inessive would be the basic ones. And then both the um, allative and illative would then be um, derived from those basic cases. Um, and we were going to go with like trying to do the same method for both, but it just didn't work for us in terms of how they were semantically coming together. And so yeah. we decided something like shadow would be used for the allative, and then um, a whole would be used for the illative for those derivations. Um, and then, of course, the ablative at that point would have to be like a whole phrase, you know, like you wouldn't be able to do it just in a particular case. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the options, but it was the option that was least liked across the, the board. Um, both of us noticed with, with these votes, by the way, that it was actually pretty even mm -hmm. um, in terms of like we weren't actually sure who was going to win. So only a couple votes differentiate all three places. All right. I'm also going to get rid of the red one now. Yeah. All right. So that left us with these two. Yes. And I'm going to double check. Yes. So <laughs> then let's look at the option where C, it was six basic cases. And so here we went with obessive coming from something like um, back or hind quarters, ablative from something like shadow, illative from mouth, inessive from belly, ablative from scent, and adessive from um, like side or chest or cheek. And so it's just like all six um, would have basic sources and we would have these six um, cases. That was the middle vote so it came in second place dang that means like what we're one. doing well i will say oh the other thing is remember we wanted to keep it because we liked all three systems so much we actually wanted to put it in a note um well i mean then that's why we we're going to put it in a note for ourselves but did we did you i didn't you're the one that maintains our notes did you <laughs> So we may have to Gone. look at the old, it was in the PDF, right? Oh, like yeah. you made a PDF after. <coughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You better have, oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, the winner is that we're gonna end up with three polyfunctional cases. Um, and so it's the smallest system that was voted on, as you can see from the options, where uh, we're gonna do some conflation, where for instance, the, um, uh, allative and locative. Um, you actually put something different on Patreon. What did I do? You put adhesive and allative. Oh, yeah. Cause... Because we ended up saying there wouldn't actually be a straight up locative, I don't think. Sure. Um, anyway, that will come from like face, chest. The abessive and ablative will come from um, something like shadow or tracks. And then the illative and inessive <clears throat> will come from something um, like mouth or belly. Um, and so, yeah. And so what this will require is that um, the verb is actually gonna determine which of these cases is intended. 
So for example, a verb of motion will indicate a lative reading or a lative, lative? Lative. Lative reading. Um, other verbs will suggest an essive reading and where specificity is required, uh, you know, there may be a repair strategy. Um, so like some way to indicate tolicity, like an adverb or something like that. And that'll just have to be something we figure out as we go, um, especially as we start coming up with verbs and full clause structures, because one of the things that, um, you know, we were struggling with was coming up with an example off the top of our head where it's like, oh my God, this would be like a really big problem. <clears throat> and then we came up with all these examples in English where it was totally ambiguous. And it's like, well, we get around it and we have to just, if it's, okay, so. if context doesn't make you figure it out, then um, you do, you just add some sort of like other phrase or adverb to make it clear what you mean. So I think I got um, one. So let's say that, um, because essentially what we have is from versus without. So cat eats without a spoon. A cat walks from the spoon, same case. If you wanted to use this for, um, you know, source in general, uh, it'd be like this gift comes from Mitzi. And then the, but then if you do like, you know, this gift is without Mitzi. Um, and then it, with a relative clause or something like, uh, I came with a gift from Mitzi. Or um, I like, I like the gift from Mitzi. It would probably end up sounding like I like the gift without Mitzi, which is weird. Um, <clears throat> but what it means is that we might have more derived um, postpositions that are more specific um, than the cases, and they would get used in edge cases like this one. So. Um, Let's um, leave this up for now, just so that we remember it. Um, <clears throat> actually, what Dark Horse says is, is probably not far off. Um, he said, uh, I like the Mitzi gift, for example, where um, things get treated adjectively that wouldn't in English. Uh, that's probably going to happen a lot more in this language. Um, it was probably going to happen a lot more anyway, given the way it was built. Okay, now I'm ready to tell you about my dream. Okay, are you ready? It was this, it was this morning and I was like half awake, half asleep. And for some reason I was thinking about the verbs of this language. Um, because uh, as we've done with our vowel harmony, everything is happening with suffixes so far, right? The original word order of this language is SOV. And so if you're going to put these uh, pronouns in places, since we're going to have agreement with subject, direct object, and indirect object, it kind of makes sense that they would be suffix, uh, prefixes to the verb, mm -hmm. because that's where they would be. And then um, as I was dreaming, I came up with this idea it's a little bit kind of like what I did with um, the original, um, what do you call it? Sheila? No. Oh. The other one it had the staples. Um, sedan. What I did with that, um, which was my idea was this. The tense element can be at the end and it could take prefixes, um, which would be the pronominal elements, and then before that would be a, um, a finite element, and that would be the verb. And then what happens is that 
basically the ends, the edge parts are reinterpreted as suffixes. So then you get your verb, and then basically like, I don't know, direct, uh, the subject, indirect object, direct object, maybe, and then tense element, all suffixes. Hmm. Interesting. What do you think? Is this, so, so with the dream, is that something you want to make potentially? I think it's the only thing that's going to work. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to have to, we're going to be stuck with prefixes at some stage. And you don't want prefixes? No, I just didn't want to bother. Okay. Yeah. Your energy levels are off the charts. <coughs> I know, I know. I don't know, it didn't work out today, you know? The, the energy? I don't know, I thought I was going to feel better, you know, better. Well, I mean, at this point, every day we're like, you're going to be better tomorrow, right? <coughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, today's coming out a little worse, it seems. Um, and uh, I think that if if I can take a moment, I have so many so many people to blame. Um, I want to blame Jesse, uh, first of all. Why? For uh, oh, for so many things. Um, because when I know that as I sleep, you know, you wait till I fall asleep, and then you wake up, and then you stand over me, and then you just kind of hiss at me. And, like a cat? Yeah, and try to feed bad energy into me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that you do that uh, every night. And I, um, you know, don't think that I, don't think that it's gone unnoticed. Okay? You said you wanted a cat, so I yeah. thought I'd give you one. <laughs> Actually, since we're talking about shirts, I want to. This shirt is from my little sister's show. She's a part of Pacific Crest, um, which is an indoor drumline uh, group. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What? This is the outdoor drum outdoor, and bugle corps. Outdoor drum and bugle corps. I the indoor drumline is what they do in the winter when they can't do the outdoor. Of course, that makes sense. This is an outdoor drum and bugle corps. She's playing the euphonium, and this is their show this year. Uh, Welcome to the Void. You know, I'm wearing this shirt, and they're going to be touring all over the country. If you want to see it, anyway. Um, oh, and hey, Chris. Oh, so uh, this is funny. So, ooh, yes, the biddies. That's this, totally what I. So Jake, um, <laughs> that's good, Mateus. Um, uh, Jake uh, is uh, raising uh, an issue, which I found personally hilarious. There was a show called Motherland. It was a British show. Um, I don't think it's, I think it's actually completed its run. It has nothing to do with witches. Um, and then later, uh, Elliot Lawrence came up with a show that he wanted to call Motherland. And then he had to call it Motherland Fort Salem because there already was a show called Motherland. And that's the show that mm -hmm. Jesse and I are working on together. And apparently in England, they just call it Fort Salem. Which makes sense, and in America, we're more likely to just call it Motherland because people don't know about the other Motherland show. Yeah. And so, yeah, but it gets very confusing. So at one point I looked up somebody on IMDb because it was like an actor we were talking about, and I was like, wait, he's in Motherland? And I was so confused until um, I went and actually looked and it was the other one. Um, and so, yeah, it's Motherland colon Fort Salem is the full official title of the show. Um, but yes, the biddies, um, that, that really did, that, that was a good, good connection to make, so the whole, yeah. the same thing, because they, and, they uh, do a lot of noises in the background. Incidentally, um, oh, there's likely going to be more of these seasons of Motherland. Oh, I don't the know the why other I thought one. It, it was, uh, I thought it was done already. Yeah, I thought it was too. Um, anyway, but, um, the, incidentally, um, Motherland Fort Salem, its first episode came out on Tuesday and it's now going to be airing on Tuesdays at 10 on Freeform, the next day on Hulu. Um, and that's, of course, the show that uh, brought us together in terms of working. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we hope you enjoy it. It's been, it's been a good run. Our first co-created language. Yeah. And, and, and if you follow my Instagram, you can see Jesse's name finally got up there as, you know, as a language consultant. Co-creator. 
She was put with the assistants last season, and then she wasn't credited first season. And not only was I put with the assistants, I was put with the production assistants. So it made it sound like I was on set. It kind of made it sound a little cool. I don't know. Like I was, I was there doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. So Jesse's a PA as well. Um, mm -hmm. she, pretty soon she's gonna take the director's guild course. Be uh, you know. That's how I roll. Yeah. You know, be a, you know full production PA and then work yourself up to you know. Uh, second, second AD, then first AD. Do that a while. Pretty soon, you're going to be directing your own features. It's going to be great. Um, so, all right, David. Yes. Do, do you want to make a note about your verb dream here in the document somewhere so we don't forget, and then we can come back to these cases and actually come up with some roots. Yeah, let's do it here. Um, Verbs. Because I'd like to say that we will remember everything you said. Um, I also feel like you were still half asleep while you were telling this. Uh, verbs come from me. Also, you only blamed me. Out of all the people you said you wanted to blame, openly, publicly, yeah, it was they, just me. Yeah, the music started going, and, and they started going it. to commercial, so I had to just wrap it up. Um, go ahead and see. I, I was thinking of a different one. No, I, I had heard of Prey. I didn't know if it was any good. I'm fine. I form. Also, I'm going to need to leave you for a second. Yeah. To go get more coffee. Um, mm -hmm. I would feel bad about that, but you made me go get your glasses right before yeah. the episode began. Yeah, it makes so. it look like all the pronouns. <laughs> so I will be right back. All right. Everyone take care of David. It makes it look like all the pronouns and the tense element are suffixes on the non-finite verb form. All right. We might also switch up that tense element to, to um, mandate distinctions between a lot of acid cases, maybe. Okay, <clears throat> um, there actually was a series that was coming out that I was really excited about um, that George R. R. Martin produced. Um, it was an adaptation of a book series. It was a, a mystery series that took place on a, on a Native American reservation. I forget what it's called, and it's not out yet. I, 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 now I understand, by the way, why the marketing teams for these shows and stuff are so insistent that there not be any buzz before they're ready to have buzz because then what happens is you hear about a thing you get excited about it and it's like when is it coming out it's like oh three months from now and then you forget about it you know that's why they don't like to release stuff early on no pre-buzz yeah it's like your pre-buzz has got to be like less than a month you know, before the airing, ideally like a week or two, uh, so that people don't forget about it. You know, because I, I can't even remember what this show is called, and I'm so excited about it. Um, were you out of the room for that? What show? There's a show that George R. R. Martin is a producer on. That's an adaptation of a book series. Uh, featured, it was a mystery series in, on a Native American reservation. Katie told us about that. Um, no, is her name Katie? Yes. The one I met in Ohio? Yeah, I actually heard about it before. Okay. She did talk about it, but I heard about it before because George R. R. Martin mentioned it on his blog. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it never did happen before when we used to watch shows on TV. Dark Winds! There we go. That's it. Jake's got it. Dark yes. Winds. Yep. Um, and when does it actually air? June twelfth. <gasps> but it's on AMC and AMC Plus. Oh, oh is my that God! Streaming or is that just the channel? Because we may, I think we get the channel. I think we do get the channel because it's on YouTube. Um, all right, all right, all right. Oh my gosh, it's airing right now. All right, 
this is this is everybody's mission forget language creation can we watch it streaming that's all i want to know we in other obviously words, can we catch up on the two episodes we obviously we missed. obviously do not have amc plus and since i'm not working on um what is it that amc show i was working on anymore um, i'm never going to get amc plus why would i um what, what was the name of that show i worked on it was so like i don't think you would have liked it but it was crazy it was like a far future dystopian show but it was like everything was the old west but also it was a kung fu show it wasn't shannara was it no uh, but like it was actually a kung fu show where they had you know it was amazing it was bloodier than you would expect but it was on amc and know? it wasn't dominion no um no, Westworld? Not, no, not Westworld. Um, I still need to watch season three of that. Um, uh, Into the Badlands. Was that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so I wrote it down. Cool. Now let's go back. I would like to potentially... Oh, yeah, color code that, baby. Okay. Um... It'd be kind of cool if we actually thought about what we may want these suffixes to look like. Um, do yeah. we have any of the words already? Like mouth or belly or any of these? Um, I don't think we do. We've got a lot of words. Do, which I appreciated because I had options as I thought about this week's drawings. And so that was exciting. <laughs> Chris, great. I like the first season or two of that. I worked on season three. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It started out weird in fantasy. Like, come on. It's a show that takes place 500 years in the future where there are no more guns and so everybody's doing sword fights. I, give me a break. Out of here. Uh, all right. Um, so let's see. Maybe if it was over. Okay. Um, in any of these suffixes are going to come after the um, yeah they're going to come category out. markers right yeah um, but um, but uh, oh but if we have if we have words that are that don't have these suffixes on them which we do uh, then. Um, uh, what do you would call it? Um, then basically we have to we have to do this like um, it could come after potentially anything. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we it wouldn't. It's not just that we have to worry about these consonants; they can come after anything. Right. What? Um Although the words that are not marked, are they going to be ones other than what are already here, like dog and rock? Um, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Um, oh, like we have sites. Yeah. That's just water and it's not one of those. Okay. Another question um, I have is how far vowel harmony is going to extend. Are these suffixes going to be subject to it? Of course. Okay. Um, no. just, just asking, so it doesn't necessarily well, have to be. I, oh yes, you're right. Yes, these, these should be. Because they're gonna be a system as opposed to be a random thing. Okay. Like, um, or I guess the, these are going to be old, right? So, and we're going to be using them a lot, as opposed to like, I know you're probably thinking of the Moro cases, where a couple of them are not harmonic, because they're clearly tacked on at the end and used to be post positions. I was actually not thinking about that, oh. but I was <clears> thinking <throat> that it, it does matter when they become suffixes because yeah if it were uh, later stages vowel harmony would not necessarily affect it but if it's early then yeah, yeah. 
So that was an, just another question I had. Um, in terms of shape, did you have a potential? Well, these, I think that these can be a little longer if we want because there's just three of them and they're not going to feature like in every sentence and so like it could be like cbc you know i think cbc is probably the maximum isn't cbc <clears throat> what we did for literally all of these well effectively they all end up as cd you mean the actual modern form yeah could end up being cbc I was confused. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So, um, should we start thinking about this? Because we're going to need, well, we also need to decide whether we want it to be from face or chest. Because right now we have like two options for each. Does that mean you want yeah. one word to mean both, or yeah. we need to choose a word? You just gotta choose it. Yeah. Um. I feel like it depends on how long they've been standing on all fours for their collective memory, because otherwise, like the allative and adhesive, I think it makes more sense to be face, because their face was always whereas their chest at one point was facing the ground. But if they've been on all four as long, or back two legs long enough, um, then, you know, that would not be in the memory anymore. Mm. Um, I like the idea of using tracks or something for the ablative and abessive, just because it's not something we've used before. Um, I mean, shadow is good too, but like, I just like the yeah, idea that, out how to do that. that cats can see markings that we can't necessarily, because they do have, I think they, right? Like we talked about their eyesight being, <clears throat> like they can see things that, that we just wouldn't see. They can see ultraviolet. Mm. Um, that's relevant for this. Okay. So maybe shadow would be the better option, but... Um, uh, well, let's just see where it goes. Okay. And we'll just put that as our preference right now. Um, and then... I, honestly, this is a 50-50 thing. In my opinion. Pull. Pull it. Basically, all right. We got face for the olive to the face, do you think that for the illative and essive, it should be to the mouth or to the belly? There we go, first vote of the day. change the scientific name of the cat and at what point are we going to decide the whole scientific names and Latin thing is just silly yes, it is. I mean that is not something that's up to us I don't think so I don't think the problem is I don't think it's up to anybody Ah, it's their long distance sight that isn't spectacular. Primordial pouch? Jay, come on. <laughs> uh, these are 
These are future cats. These are future cats from our, our house cats. They don't, they don't know anything about their primordial pouches. How otters have a pouch? Hmm. Interesting. Um, we were only like two votes away from matching the numbers, and the vote is still very close. So hmm. I'm gonna let it go. Oh, now only one vote. Oh. Huh. They do have a pooch instead. Oh my goodness, it's tied. And that was the last vote. Huh. I'm just gonna let it ride for a second to see if somebody cares enough to sign in to an alternate account. <laughs> or if Our Bibliridian comes and tells us which. Yeah. Oh! Oh, he did. He did. And now we have all numbers match. Uh, oh, it's tied again. Where did the 20th come from? I was about to say I'm ending the poll now. And now I don't even remember which one pulled ahead at the last second for the 19th vote. Someone uh, signed in. Dark Horse, is that under both armpits? And then, uh, and then Bib Loridian, um, have you ever done a video on binomial nomenclature? And if not, would you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Matisse. With Mandarin names now, that's cool. Yes, there are. I've seen some of them in Meridian's dinosaur books. All right, so should I end it? Because we have more votes. Like, I think now... I'm going to need to make you decide. Uh, um, sure, end it. <laughs> and indeed, I think it would be pretty odd, too, if it were just one, but I wouldn't put it past uh, otters, you know? So here's my thought. Um, mouth and face are almost the same. Mm-hmm. So belly? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And again, we may need to go back to shadow for our tracks because it may just, we got to think of a, a conceptual way that that would make sense in terms of having a, a root for it. <clears throat> yeah, or unless, I mean, I mean, it's a little complex, but like there could just be a solid root means like tracks or trail, I don't know. Remember, we don't have to worry about number in this language. That's true. Um, I don't know. Well, let's start with um, eliciting potential forms for face. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and you know, um, my personal preference is that we use central vowels for these words. Um, and I'll tell you why, because it's like, if you go, uh, remember, this is one of those things where it's like, it's very convenient where you're, when you're the language creator and you're looking from the modern time back and be like, Let's just to use the central vowels here as they're more likely to fall in line with the um, uh, vowel harmony. But if you look at it from the opposite direction, it'd be like these things got used and grammaticalized more easily because they had the central vowels in them. That's the idea. Anyway, so yeah, face, belly, give us something. Sorry. Let's start with face. Yeah, let's start with face. What do you think is a good, um, try to use a central vowel. We've got, we got the high one, uh, and we have the mid one, uh. And if you don't have it open, you may want Luxergy. <clears throat> Did you have Luxergy open? Um, no, I don't think I do. Chris is pointing out what if cats 
have words for head, brow, and snout, but no specific word for face. Um, that kind of also makes sense. So let's just work with forms right now. We'll decide what exactly what it means later. Lexergy is open. I'm going to reload it just in case there have been changes. Um, <clears throat> There have been, because this was not, uh, the specific romanizations weren't available for all of them last time. Oh, we're just doing, uh, we're just doing the face thing right now. Um, I'm going to pull up our... I, oh yeah, the inventory, that's a good idea. The invent hurry. Now, as a reminder, because last time I forgot about this, if it's in orange, it is not proto. Yeah. If it's red, it's proto, but now dead. Um, and if it's in black, it's proto and survived all the way through to the modern form. So avoid the um, green and orange ones it's as you're black trying and red. to come, yeah. come up with uh, these root forms. And David has already requested central vowels. So you're looking at a schwa or that, that high central, which is my favorite. Um, mm -hmm. Sarcasm. Um, but yeah. That is that what you doing that's that color now too oh that's right because we killed off that also, let's measle. make this table bigger you know what i mean that was all you why not just make the front bigger oh whoops. it's not adjusting what you actually need how is that even It's not. This is so bizarre. Okay, that's much better. Um, okay. Oh, hey, Logan. Okay, so Dark Horse, that's too long. Yes, this is fine. And that just comes out keys. Yeah. Okay, another suggestion there, Q. That's gonna that's gonna be problematic. Uh, are you saying problematic just because uh, similarities with some other ones? No, because it's going to end up like it's going to be very difficult uh, harmonically because it's going to get changed, right? Aren't they all actually going to be changed? No. Okay. Um, all right, so I don't know, kind of liking because I think it's good. This is also cute with an M, yeah. But I think I think I think this is just a winner here. I, okay. I, I like that. All right, all right, then that is something related to the face, as Chris is pointing out. Um, yeah, we may end up I kind of making um, it more specific. Where were the nouns? Way up higher. I got it. All right. So uh, let's well let's put it up here. Um, Need a separate table for cases. I think that um, it should be snout because that is indeed where they go. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. They make that little noise too. Yeah, a little mousy noise. A little mousy noise for the cat. <laughs> um. All right, so then let's take this word for snout and decide, is it basic enough to be basic? 
or ought it get a suffix? That's going to come out as, no, it's going to come out as keys right there, but um, soft or spongy? You don't want it to be hard or rough, right? This mm. none. All right. Let's see here. Oh, Kitsna. Kitsna. I like that. That's cute. All right. Do we have a lint? We do. I'm going to just take this one. We did a we did a podcast on on triconsinal roots. Was that season three or was that this season? to be season three because this season I think we've only done the one so far well well by the way I need your help with that to figure out where season four actually began which episode but um, it was either the very last episode of season three or the very first episode of season four um, it's, it's, it's a very cute word all right so we've got that word in there and now, do you want to change that to snout? Yes. Snout, and so it's going to be that. And I'm, I'm happy with keeping the consonant there, because that's a nice, strong consonant. What's a What's this line underneath the E mean? Because um, that ordinarily means syllabic. Uh, I think that's where the stress is. Really? That shouldn't be where the stress is. Stress should stress is initial in this language. Maybe not. <clears throat> but if we look... His grammar? Oh, it's floating. It means it's a suffix. Okay. So it's marking it as the suffix. So that way you can always tell. Um, where the suffixes are. Well, why doesn't this one have it, too? There's two suffixes. Because at this point, we had never had two. Oh, huh. okay. Cool. Um, so... Because some of the suffix rules are different from some of the... This one, yes. So here's... Um, Here's, oh, thank you, Jake. Here's um, a thought. Do we want uh, to do um, do we want to do anything uh, for to further? What's the word for that? You know, the thing that happens in grammaticalization. Reduce, erode. Thank you. Do we want to erode it further? Make that K a G. Kitsnakis. So, what blocks nasal spreading? Is a stop block it? I believe so. That's interesting. Go in the wrong direction if you wanted to see that. You're probably right. You're probably right. Nasal vowels spread from base to affix. Nasal vowels spread through glides. The consonant H liquid and nasal stops. Otherwise, the spreading of nasalization is blocked. It's good to know. Okay. Okay, so here is my thoughts so far on this. Yeah. And I may change my mind, so I don't know. Okay. 
Um, I feel like something that, like for these suffixes specifically, um, if it gets attached to something whose root ended in a nasal, um, the voiceless stop is more likely to become voiced. But I don't think that's necessarily the case for every voiced consonant ending a suffix in its protoform. Well, my, my thought is that it's just kind of a break thingy, so, like, I'm thinking just since it's a suffix, you know, um, this thing just needs to get eroded. I mean, because it's not, that's not where the stress is. So, yes. And so would it be something where it's like, it would be okay if something voiceless comes before it, but otherwise you would expect it to be a G? Yeah. So like sites would be like sites case, but this would be like it's like this. Yeah. What is sites anyway? Water. And is it used on its own? Yeah. Let's see what happens with that. Specifically, I believe it's running water. Sites so close. close. Watson. Hey, it's good to see you back. So how are you feeling about that? Hold on a sec, I gotta... Wow, we don't have to be the nasal, huh? I mean, we also don't have a G. We don't? No. So if we do this, we're actually like expanding the sound inventory. <coughs> Let's see. <coughs> Let's see. Because I was actually thinking of doing something even more radical, saying it would go to a G after a vowel, but it would go to angma after a nasalized vowel. I mean, that makes sense, yeah, but yeah, nice. that would also be adding, so I guess at that point we had to decide, are we for a suffix ready to add two more sounds? And hello, Mad Pie. Oh, you're saying hi back to W. Watson, but that's okay. I'm saying hello anyway. Yeah, just because like, it's so far away from the stress It's got to do something. Okay, so this would Sinkus. also, by the way, Sinkus. affect Sinkus. Um, Sinkus. our hard or rough suffix, which is ka. Hmm? Ka is our hard or rough suffix. And so if we make this change, if we hmm. want to do that, it would make sense that the ka would also be affected. I don't think so. Um, because it's it's an older one. So this would be specific to the case suffixes, not to. Well, I suppose. I suppose you're you, well. Okay, so here's maybe maybe you're right. And what we should look at is basically it's like right. Here's our, uh, uh, right, and then we've got potentially that, you know, but this is, um, you know, this is the head, right? Oh, that stressed and unstressed. It's yeah. Like, what what I are know. you doing with SU? I know. Okay. You're supposed to use the Greek ones, but I don't want to go and find them. 
And so basically it's like, if it's here, it doesn't apply. But if it's anywhere else, it does. I guess that's what I'm thinking. So that would that imply root internally as well though? Like if we had, so like, or like if we had a compound word. Maka, right. And also like, you know, manka, but then, or manka. Uh, and I don't know, maska. Well, of course that would be, but then like, maya ga, right? Even if it were like a compound and not like a suffix creation? Because I mean, I, I don't see us having three syllable roots just by themselves. So then the question becomes like, is it? No, but like, that's what I'm saying. This is a suffix. I, I'm just asking, would it apply in compounds where it's not a suffix situation? Like you put right. two roots together. I'm just wondering how far, like, does this need to be a rule written just for suffixes, or is this, like, across the board? I think that compounds are usually just treated as their own thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we haven't talked about how compounding is going to work. Um... I'm just trying to figure out where it would all apply. So the ka suffix would be affected if it were in the third syllable. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the idea. And then I was Yeah, my uh Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's just this, basically if it's outside of the head foot, it's got to do it. And then with that, so with that understanding, how does this thing touch up? But, um, do we want to say that we have um, 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 I don't know, like C B C C B something like that. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I mean, there's an easier way to do this if you have, you know, foot notation, but this essentially defines minimally what could be the first foot, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we don't have any consonant clusters um, at the fronts. Yeah, and we never have three consonants in a row, right? Um, I think we could because the TS becomes, unless it's coded in Lexergy as a single. No, it is. So the TS is connected by a bar, so that should be good. But we do have, okay. for examples, Sitesbo, where you get YTSB. Oh, that's that, yeah, so that you definitely can't have three consonants in a row. So what we're going to say is that. Now, now it's, um, C asterisk, really essentially. Really, it's just, yeah, it's essentially just, yeah. Is it asterisk? Yeah, because it's repeatable. Okay. Got it. Now, what this would mean is that depending on the stage it applies, I think it's going to be after the KQ merger. Um, but, so, K is going to go to G. T is going to go to D. I don't think P ever occurs. Um, or I believe it, we don't have a P. Like it would only occur in a place where it wouldn't oh, change. Oh, we do have a P. We do, but no, but it would only occur in a place where that change wouldn't happen. It only occurs because it was devoiced. Mm -hmm. 
and it, we don't want it to get that TS though. I don't think, right? No, we don't want it oh, to get because that's plus continuum, we don't and its source is also TS. plus continuum. Yeah, we don't want it. Okay, so we don't want it to get that TS. Um, so let's see where that TS rule applies. Nasal file, geminate simplification, bell harmony, central element isolation, the bell spread, loss of uvular rotis. 21. 21. Loss of uvular non rotics could be right after this. What do you think? As far as like location, and in general, so I'm obviously I'm a big proponent of this sound change, but um, what do you say? Okay, but then just to clarify, mm -hmm. we've got, you've got something in Lexergy that I can't access unless you pull it up again. Can you pull it up again? Um, let's say though, um, we have, Trying to find an example that would work. Oh, home is uh, just B uh, I N, the central vowel. Uh huh. Bam. Bam. Uh -huh. And so that one would be. Bam. Bam. Uh, okay. Bam. Okay. okay. Yes, with you're a K. right. Yep. So it's not that the nasal really wants it to reduce. No. It's that it is now so far near the end of the word where stress is being reduced, 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 yeah. that the, the voicing happens. Yeah, we're going to have a separate sound change that I think you're going to be very excited about that's going to address that. But, but yes, at the end of the day, it will end up as bent Okay. But then something that is marked for the bent classes, like sites bull, yeah. is marked for it because that, I forget, I think that means river. Um, that would be like, Sites will go. Sites will goes. It would, Something like that. Yeah, this stage it would be sites bon, sites bon goes. Okay. It might become something else in a minute, yeah. but yes. I really think you're going to be excited about this next sound change. The smile always worries me. Worries me. Okay. I, okay. I really think you're going to like this. Okay. Um, all right, well, let me write this up. Here we go. And this is going to be um, uh, obstruent voicing. Oh, 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 oh. It's a side note. Uh -huh. I had some weird dreams this morning too in that weird wakey slash sleepy time. Mm -hmm. Not as good as yours because you actually dreamed something productive. Mm -hmm. But then you need a B because really what we're saying is we don't know whether there's a consonant. Well, I guess there has to be a consonant if there's another vowel. Anyway, yes. um, the I was in a competition mm -hmm. for making pizzas. But like, I had to use two different kinds of lettuce as toppings. Oh. Yeah, it was bizarre. And so I made my choices of lettuces that I was going to do. But then, like, some of them were, like, really big leaves. And so at my first pass at it, I just laid it down, like, the big leaf on the pizza sauce in, like, these little areas. And then put, like, little spinach leaves on top of them. 
And then I was like, oh, that doesn't look right. I need to like shred the bottom layer and I'll leave the spinach leaves like as is. So I take the big leaf off and shred it with my hands, getting uh -huh. pizza sauce everywhere because yeah. it's already been in the pizza sauce. Yeah. Somehow shredding it made it so it covered the entire pizza. There was all this extra lettuce and I'm like, well, oh. crap, now I'm going to have to. So I start eating the other lettuce leaves off the pizza because I'm like, oh no, I got to get rid of them. And then somehow the room I was in, I guess, was on a ship because I look out and there's like ship and the motherland Fort Salem witches were on there and they <laughs> killed a dude over there. Anyway, it wow. was it was a whole thing. And I ended up adding chicken as well to the pizza. I don't know. I'm like terrified that some dude's getting killed over here on a ship while I'm in a kitchen baking for a pizza contest <laughs> that has to use lettuce. We were Logan's asking. Um, so... <laughs> like, we discovered yesterday, or just the other day, that we both have the same favorite type of lettuce, which is neither of those two. Which is the, the butterhead or butter crisp, depending on what it's called, but the butter leaf. And that was actually what I was using, was the butter leaf, because mm -hmm. it does not shred very well. Anyway. It okay. was. It was very bizarre. Ooh, I love Lucy. Mm, the show that we always watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that was, uh, because... Meridian claimed when we wanted to watch an episode of I Love Lucy during dinner that that's what we always have on TV at our house, which I think we've watched now four episodes in total with her. Yep. Ever. But. We always watch it. I Love Lucy should always be on. All right. So here's a sound change that I think you're going to be most excited about. Ooh, baby gym lettuce. That sounds nice. Are you ready? No. I think you're going to like this. Where's our, where's all our examples and graham i just want to say this is david oh i think graham's going to be excited about this too all right i keep looking to see if i have more coffee just in case is there any more downstairs no wow that was you, it. you drank it all so here's a sound change so we <gasps> hypnopompia is that the word for when you're like half sleep half awake and how wrong am I saying that? Hypnopompia. Hypnopompia, I think if it's English, yeah. You you go on. <gasps> oh, that is lovely. Hmm. Hypnopompic is the adjective form. Yeah. Oh my god, and it comes from Greek, sleep, and sending away. Hmm. You're sending away the sleep. That's amazing. Okay. Okay. Go All right. On. So here's so right now we have uh, essentially um, uh, Kitslanges, 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 right? But um, oh. Negotia. Ooh. Uh, you actually uh, raised a good point. No, it's not supposed to apply universally, obviously. Um, it is in between the two vowels. Hypnagogic. Nice. Obstruent. So we'll, we'll call this a kind of um, intervocalic. But I don't want to just call it intervocalic voicing, so it's like long distance intervocalic voicing. Because, yes, you are right. Um, somehow this situation needs to happen. Okay, I have a quick question. Yeah. Can you put a hyphen between the long and the distance to make me feel better? I want you to look up long distance running right now. Just type it into Google. You did it wrong. Oh, jeez. All right. Never mind. Now I want you to look up the Iron Maiden song, The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner. Iron Maiden is wrong. Okay, go ahead. Press it in. Let's just see, let's just see how they have it. No, just scroll down to an official. Oh my gosh, they do have a hyphen. All right. If 
Feynman Maiden says there must be an apostrophe, I'm sorry, a hyphen, then there is a hyphen. Um, Thank you, Dark Horse, yes. All right, so... How do you put a variable here that says these potentially could be the same val, but they don't have to be? Well, I guess. What if you? There. Yeah, that's that that that's how you do it. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, uh thank you. Is Vibran? Not Vibran. It's Vibran. Right, it's it's actually the vowel that I have a hard time producing that high central, uh, but but, oh, Viren? but they said I could I could produce it like I do in the word mirror, so I say say All right, uh, okay, so that's that's good. All right, okay, so here's my sound change. You ready? Voiced stops. Nasalize after nasal vowels. So like N D M B N G. Yes, and so like let's say that you had a uh, and this would be everywhere. So let's say you had a word that was like I don't know. Um, uh, mumbas. Instead of saying mumbas, it's mumas, mumas. But the funny thing is this. Because nasalization spreading happens at rule 20. It still blocks the nasalization. Yes, so that would be that, but, you know, that, this is just saying if these words exist, that would be... Mumos. Mumos. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Um, I, I feel like the repercussions haven't been fully studied. <laughs> <laughs> and this would apply whether it's voiced or voiceless? No, only voiced. Okay, so it would have to be, and so it would be after that rule. And so this and would take... only the G, the D, and the B would fall into it. That's correct. So uh, this word that we have that's kitzlanges, uh, which then becomes kitzlanges, would just become kitzlanges. Kitzlanges. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out if, if this would affect things we've already Let's take a look. Done? Let's take a look because I think it might. Also, though, like. What? You felt very warm when I touched you. That's I how it swear. works. That's how it works, man. It's been a rough time. Um, okay, that. So, clothing? Yes. Which so, I just did a drawing of? Yes. So, him, him, be, him, be would become hime. Hime. You gotta make these changes after I do drawings, don't you? You gotta admit though that this is kind of hard to say. Hime. Hime. Hamba. Hamba. What? <laughs> so instead of hebe, it's hebe. Hem. 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 <laughs> and so what would distinguish clothing from fur is whether or not the fur cell is nasal. That's correct. That's something. So, heme is fur, heme is clothing. Do you like, she love it. Yay! Magpie likes it too! <laughs> oh, all right. There we go. All right, so let's write that sound change in. I'm gonna have some. Could we go? Do you see? I just voiced the. Because it's the third out. 
Copigo. Copigo. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Let's see. I'm going to make sure this. Okay, I'm just gonna write right here, and then uh, we stop nasalization. Let's see, minus continuum, plus voice becomes plus nasal after. And can we do it? Can we do it? Oh, no, it's silly. Let's just put vowel plus nasal. That's just, I don't know what I was thinking. I know what you're Okay. Um, the voiced stops B, or B, D, and G. Sorry. Uh, become. You did that at the exact moment I got a notification on my computer. <laughs> it's bizarre. Okay, and finally, let's go back here and oh wait, we need a slash. So and Jake, yes, we will have this velar nasal only in very specific distant suffixes. Just like finish. <laughs> Most energy I've seen you have in three days. Cheers, partner. Cheers. Oh no. Mmm, go. something wrong in the sound change. Let me go address that. Thank you. <laughs> Boone, it's the new, it's the new nasal you didn't know about. Mm -hmm. It looks D. just, it just looks like a D, mm -hmm. but you know, you know when you see it, when to apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, go back to our word list then and fix what you need to fix, including Herman. Hey, man. Already fixed it. Are there any others that need to be fixed? Honestly, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice little thorn. All right. Okay, so let's go back. This is going to be for that or that. This is going to be that or that. And that's it. And that's it. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. And so do you want to write those forms? So this is going to be, it's a high vowel, right? Yeah. Oh, come over here. This.
We got one. Let's do belly. <laughs> belly it is. All right. So, again, we want either a CV or a CBC form. And um, bear in mind, uh, I'm going to put it back. Uh, we do want a central vowel. Um, but I'm going to put it back on the... Uh, Again, just the black and red. And as a reminder, when it comes to nasalization spreading, nasalization spreads through this, 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 and this. Wait, oh, these two, right? No, but not these. And through the nasals. Yeah, and the nasals. Um, but uh, does it spread through the coronal approximants? I don't remember that. I'm gonna look. You can leave it there. Oh, here we can just we can just test it out. Um, no, no, it spreads through glides. So glides, consonant H, liquid, capital R, and nasal stops. But not L and R. So in other words, basically, if you're coming up with forms and you want the nasalization to spread, the suffix must start with H, R, N, M, W, or Y. We've got um, zer as a recommendation from Dark Horse. We have zar with an H as a recommendation from Cassandra. W. Um, probably not going to do w, uh, Davide, because that's the same exact suffix that we have for uh, I believe it's water. water. Yeah. In other words, good suffix. We've used it. Yeah, we've already used uh, we've already used with right, mm -hmm. uh, Beatrice. So we've got zer and zar. Kind of okay with those. Um, Obviously, feeling very z. Yeah. It's all it's back. Um, we can't. Oh, there's rim. Rim. Uh, we uh, remember uh, only use the not the green ones, only the black and red. Num. All right, now let's let's see what num, rim, and zer would look like. Uh, let's see. And then Viren has also hack. Mm. Oh, whoa. The num suffix is probably, I mean, I, um, that just got, oh, no. It's because of the, no, it's because of what we used. Um, let's do um, this. And actually, it would probably be more helpful if they were next to what they were. So the top one we get uh, ne or non. Next ones we are getting a re, re or ron. And then we have um, tir, tsur.
And this is um, into, right? Yeah, this would be belly. The source. Mm. So towards is kiss, 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 kiss. Into is potentially kind of a, a na, non type of thing. A ra, ron type of thing. Or tir, su, tur type of thing. You want to do a vote on all three of them or eliminate one? I don't know. What are you feeling? I'm iffy on the tir, tur. Okay. But only because we have our diminutive animate is a tz suffix right and so you know we may end up with like yeah um which just which is fine you know having that repetition um but just in terms of like if you have the choice aesthetically mm. having something a little bit more different and we don't currently have any suffixes beginning with an n um and only one other beginning with an R, but with a different sound. I mean, I guess that would be the same too, though. Because the dog, you can end up getting like, so I don't know. So maybe all three. Yeah. I feel like the N is going to be the one that yeah, wow, okay. feels less repetitive when added to other things. By the way, Cassandra, um, it was uh, that R coda, it's dragging the uh, it's dragging it up to uh, so it doesn't actually matter what value you put there. Well, let's decide between these two then. So you have essentially N, N, or R, R, R. And then, yeah, pull it up. As far as I, uh, as far as I know, nobody's told me if we can stream Dark Wind yet. Everyone's ignoring you. I know. Mm. I already can't do the sound, and so if we have words. Maybe I should put the t back on the table. I'd rather have that repeated than the whole. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see what we got. What do you have? Hey. Are you checking email? Yeah, I'm checking email. Checking email. Mm, they say there's a service called AMC Plus. Whew. Not going to sign up for that. Yeah, definitely not. Eight um, million streaming services, I tell you. Yeah, Mini isn't here, right? I don't think so. I just wanted to let Mini know that um, you know, I was able to switch out her PDF, uh, which is uh, Mini's going to have. Um, uh, document go up on July 1st on Fiat Lingua. <clears throat> Ooh, is it Shania? Uh, yep. Nice. Okay. I'm gonna let it go. We still have a couple more boats out there. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Burs, I don't think you'd be able to stream it, copyright stuff and everything. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think that we uh, know what our winner is. Indeed. All right. Good Thank deal. you. Thank you to everyone who just made it more pronounceable to me.
All right. Also, gosh, this is cute. I know that this is probably why you suggested it. Nom, 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 nom. The word for belly is num. All right, and then that is going to be that. <laughs> there was kind of a cool thing that they were doing during COVID. They, I don't know if they got rid of it, but there were some things. Some where services like, still allow it. Where you could do like a it? watch party. Oh, it was yeah. nice. Hulu and Netflix both still have that. Mm. Um, right. I know I would because I've seen it more recently. Um, I don't know if the other streaming services may have it. Okay. So then let's come up with the actual word for belly, which, I mean, obviously should be your num num, right? Yes. Or your, or your num num, your your belly hole. <laughs> I guess that is a container house. Then that could be the word for, you know, stomach inside or belly outside. Like it could be both. It's all one word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, okay. Let's see what... Num num versus uh num Basically it's your nan nan or your nan nan. Are we gonna use for duplication in other places? It's just we've used it here, it's just using it for the noun. Noun meaning belly. Okay. And that reduplication is not to be marked as a class marker. That reduplication is just reduplication. Well, one of them was re just reduplication, but the other was... Mm -hmm. Class marker. So this is reduplication, this is class marker. Right. I'm asking Mumu and Tsutsu. Would those be viewed as reduplication in the minds of the speaker, or would that be viewed as that, that's being marked for its class? Oh, um, I don't know. Because this is the first time we're stepping outside of these class suffixes for reduplication. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. You're right. I, let's do let's do Nima. Okay. All right. Um, so then, you know, let me just make sure I got the vowel right. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, Oh, Jake was being cute with his suggestion of AMC plus. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and then the B would become an M. Yeah. All right. Yeah, into the belly would be like Nemana. Mm-hmm. Nemana. Nemana. No, I'm just having fun with how I say it. Namana. 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 It's more of an A, not an A. <laughs> nah. All right. <clears throat> Good. Uh, all right. So. Now. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Okay. We got something starting with a K, that's CBC, and hi. We have something starting with an N that's going to be nasalized all the time and is low, or, you know, that nasal mid one. And let's see what we've got here. What have we not used? We don't have, we, we don't have this non-nasalized. We don't have the A form without a nasal. Uh, this is just a, this is just a variable. That means it's either going to be eh or om. That's it. But we don't have any a or o, do we? Without eh o. That's this one. That's the a? Yeah. That one can show up as a, a, o, or um, a. Well, we haven't used that one for the cases. Yes, we haven't. So let's let's do that. Something with that's going to give us a low, and so it can have a schwa, I believe. 
it just needs to be not nasalized. Yeah. <clears throat> and not come before an R or an L. Because of not that. You know the whole R and L thing. Actually, I don't think this would. No, if we're sticking to central vowels, it would have to be the, the one up above, it would be high. Yeah, schwa. Okay, so no, this is going to have to have an ah or an ah in it then, not a central vowel. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So it's going to have to have an ah or an ah, not a schwa. Very sorry. Um, but where's that thing where it changes before R and L? Remember that one? The vowel backing and lowering down here? 17? That's or uvulars. Or... No, it's a different one. It was a table. Are you sure we kept the table? I'm not sure. Um, what about the vowel glide merger? Not that one. Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, if something ends in L, it makes it long? Oh, no, before another code of consonant. So if it was like Kals. Oh, I oh, will raise the before R and L and A. Uh, a pre liquid uh, mid vowel lowering. Mid vowels that aren't central become minus ATR before liquid codas. And vowels A and A merge as A before liquid codas. That was it. Okay. All right. Sorry. All right. Uh, and we'll decide what it means later. Let's let's see what kind of suggestions we have. Um, can you? Um. Okay. I'm pretty sure YAR is not going to work. Like I'm I'm actually 100% sure YAR is not going to work. Um, Ooh, let's have something that starts with a consonant dark oh, horse. Oh, Jake is the one who suggested num. Yay! Uh, Tom is going to be nasalized. Let's not do that. All right. So we have tuck. No. Tuck. Duck. No, no schwa. Um, and you said no to yar. Yeah. Tom. No nasal. Yup. Let's let's try silver Yals. tails. Yowls. Um, yowls. And then I also uh, wanted to try yap just to take a look at it. And then, um, and dark horse. Um, Keep it to one syllable for these. Screwed up. It is totally screwed up. Okay, hold on a sec. Oh, it was screwed up over here too. What you gonna do? No, well, let's. I don't know. Let's do a third one. Oh, it got screwed up because you changed the top two to num num or num bin. All right. Well, now we're just doing that. Oh, and these should all be suffixes too. Silly old me. Let's just see what happens. Oh, right, of course, it can't end in a P. Uh, P is in a proto form. Now, this is fun. It can end in a B for some reason. That's weird. Because B is a proto. Baja. 
Bajas. This is really fun. I actually like them both. They're yab yab or yes yas. What's this for? Or is something meaning tracks away from. Yeah, and so the reason that Silvertail did the LS is because the L drops out and leaves behind it a long vowel. I actually like the idea of a long vowel for this suffix um, because it's the ablative slash abessive. Adds a feeling of longing. Aww. I like that. Now the question is, do we like uh, with an S? Because we already have an S here. Mm. What can follow the L? Can anything follow the L? I think so. Jake is saying the long vowel is a bad idea with the, the yeah, initial. You could get the double long vowel that way. How? Because there's only a very small number of vowels that could... Uh, I don't see... Like, I understand what you're saying, Jake, but I don't see how such a situation could ever emerge because we know the vowel that's always going to have to come after it. Can you come up with an example? Because if we want the L something, we could have the H. We could have a Z because that is a proto, which would then become Yates. Um, or if you wanted um, a stop, like a, a, a B or um, you know, DK. Ninyech. Kachyach. Bajach. Oh, Jake, you deserve to set off false alarms for the number of times you find yep. issues in in things you get to set off all the alarms you want no, we'll see. we'll pay attention and try to figure out now i want to see okay the h just stays there Baja. it's kind of cool um and also i think this will stay. We allow that? I think so. Um, what? Can you say that for me? Uh, no, because it's a protoform. It'll never surface. Remember? But why in a protoform would you allow that? I don't know. Apparently we don't. Okay. What are, what's our what's our syllable structure? Where is it? It should be specified in phonotactics, CVCC. The first coda consonant may be an approximate, the second may be nasal or fricative. Nasal or fricative, and that's it. And so we've kind of gone through the options, unless you want it to end in a nasal, because would the vowel be nasalized? Because would the L block it from becoming a nasalized vowel? I don't know. I'm actually curious. You just type one in so just have, for funsies. So we have S, Z, H, H. Yeah. Or M and N. And that's it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and what am I putting here? I just want to see what would happen with like an M. Um, and you got to change all the capital R's because you've you know, yeah. ruined. Because I'm just curious to, I can't remember what order everything goes in. It shortens the vowel and just makes it nasal. That can't be right. That's some kind of monkey business there. Hold on. Interesting. And not that I want this, by the way. I was just curious for the form, not because I wanted the suffix to have the name. Hold on a sec. We're going to have to... Mm -hmm. Okay. So it lengthens. Yelm. Yane. 
it's not until Val Harmony it loses the long marking. Oh, well, it shouldn't do that. It shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be long. That's that's just an artifact of the sound change applier uh, being too literal. Um, so yeah. And dark horse that does work as a proto form. Uh, we didn't want another K because we already had one K suffix. Yeah. So it it, um, the, it should be uh, nene and and uh, carillon so and bajon. Those should all be long. Um, and then if we put a, a Z at the end, we would get, you know, it's. So yeah. like, yeah, it's. Might as well take a look at it. And then from here, I think what we should do is feel out what our top ones are and, and we could let it vote if we feel. Bajats. Okay. Didn't push it too hard on that. What do you think? How many options can you do on one of these polls? Four. So we have to eliminate one, two, three, four, five, six, no, five. We need to eliminate one. I think we eliminate the nasal because we've already said we didn't want nasal. Okay. I just wanted to see what would happen with the yell. Okay. Like that was why I asked you to type it in. Are you fine with all the other options? Yeah, actually there's one option we haven't considered. Okay, you go ahead and do that. And I'm I gonna am going to start gonna do it, the poll. But hold on. Well, I'm just going to... Oh. It only drops out when there's another coda. Right. And it doesn't lengthen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and... Good. Yeah. All right, so it's going to either be this... Or yes, right? Okay. Yay. Or, and it's always going to be the same vowels, right? Either the A or the A. Uh. No, it could also be an O or a... But for the purposes of these examples? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, just the H, right? And this is just based on what you see on the screen. As David said, it could also be an O in there. I'm just making sure that I do not have any typos here. Okay. Four options. see what the preferences are and as a reminder one of our other case suffixes does end in an s um, so we do have that s represented which is one reason david was thinking maybe veer away from it but this is a different thematic vowel and so that is something um, to consider and it would also be a long vowel an uh, anime fan would like pronunciation. Um, and so it would either be, like, let's just say, like, Ninyes. 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 And then, Karyas. Karyach. Karyach. Karyats. Bajas. Bajach. Bajach. Bajats. <laughs> Jake. Oh, that's funny. 
Oh, we definitely have mm. some top ones emerging. Yeah. But it's not, well, no, it's actually pretty evenly spread. We got um, a few more outstanding votes. Kind of like, I kind of like the H best. We have a three way tie now, it looks like. Yes, we do. A couple more votes, let them come in. Um, it looks like one is definitely kind of kind of out. <clears throat> uh, Be thinking about what you want for a poll patron. I always take these three ones and have people vote. <laughs> wow. Take the three top ones and have people vote. Have that be our patron poll? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Not gonna reveal, but totally, totally liked that. Um, for Yeats. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we roughly have the same number of viewers and votes, so now my question is, do you want me to end it and we can discuss making this the patron poll with the top three options because they are still very close. Um, or do we want to declare a winner and go from there? Because we've got this matches that changed a little bit. Oh, now all three are at 30. Okay, so now now we have three matchy matchy. Um, well, um, I don't have a really good idea what to do with the poll because we haven't started discussing the genitive yet. Maybe we could. Um, let's just actually, <laughs> let's just make this the, the patron poll. Okay. So, patrons, you're going to be voting between the top three, which were evenly split here, um, with the S, the TS, or the H as the final consonantal sound of this suffix. Everything else will be the same in terms of the, the actual vowels that will show up in the long vowels, all of that. So it's really just about that final consonant sound, about whether it ends up being S, T, or F. Yeah, but what I'll do, I mean, I know it's kind of a, a simple poll, but I'll, I'll give you a lot of examples. Um, so that'll be nice. So you can see what it, really get a sense of what it looks like with all of them. Yeah. Really love this long vowel though for the oblative. I think it's lovely. Um, yeah. So. Um, it's also a good poll to have in a, a week that you're still not doing well. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the meantime, though, what we can discuss is um, shadow tracks. What do you want to do? What do you mean? Hugs to be day. Um, what do you want it to mean? Oh, the actual meaning of it. Yeah. It's a good question. Um, I like the idea of tracks. I'm just like, you're right. I'm trying to think of. Okay. Oh, way to make that work. Um, you want to just do shadow then? Shadow, I think, makes more sense. All right. Because then it's pretty straightforward. Oh, you could also, here's another thing you could add to the poll. Yeah. Um, oh, did you want to type something first? No, you go ahead. Um, another thing you could add to the poll is what the word for shadow could be right now. Um, so we could choose a suffix that will go with it. So that way you could show like, here's what it'll look like as the word for shadow. Oh man, you had to, come on, you know I meant the language Wikipedia. And I feel like shadow would have to be warm slash abstract. Mm. I mean, it wouldn't yeah. have to be, but I feel like that's the most yeah, likely. Either that or liquid. Um, mm. I didn't have an example. 
example. Did it come from Spanish? Was it borrowed from Spanish, Jake? That would be cool. <laughs> that is true, Silver Ah. Uh, that is funny. Um, okay. Anyway, so that's it. But that's just another idea to expand what, what to get in the poll. Yeah. All right. Um, we got about five minutes left, but... Um, I guess we're going to have to start here next time. Because uh, having a kind of little agreement thing sometimes for the agenda is cool, but um, let's just start writing some stuff down if we're sent, you know. Like, um, like the, the cats. So we have these things, these three concepts, right? Cat, sent, home. I just want to say it's the home with the cat scent. Do the ancient Greeks have bears? Do they have bear traps? A cat scent would, would mean um, a cat's scent. Um, home scent would mean the home's scent. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, the simple thing to do would be this, and it would be, you know, cat's scent home. That is, the home with the cat's scent. But I don't know if that's too easy. Cat scent sounds like you have an accent. That makes you sound like a cat. No, that's obviously a cat scent. <laughs> cat scent sounds the same way as cat scent. <laughs> hey, Carl. Well, in Silvertail, that's a question. Alien ability could be a thing, um, yeah. but we may decide that they don't distinguish between an alien in alien ability and alien ability. Um, yeah. It's really anything is markable by a scent, right? Yeah. So. And that and the idea is that you mark it in order to claim it. And so they may not have a distinction at that point. See, so, so Jake, that's that's my thinking. We're, we're foothold traps, so he's talking about the ones that go... Mm -hmm. Maybe he says they were invented in 1600. That's super late. Like... Yeah, but traps before that didn't, they just had different kinds. They just uh, they have dig pits, a big hole. And pits in the ground. They grass. had, you know, like net kind of traps. There's, there's different. Um, so the, uh, then there's like, you know, the having oh, marked okay. it. Yeah, go for it. And so the... So some sort Cat of verb marked it home. The with sent home. So I was actually wondering if um, this could be combined with the um, illative slash inessive, because it's like inside the cat scent hmm. range. Therefore, it is its territory. That's, that's definitely something that makes sense. It would be end up being longer. Yes. Which is kind of a bummer. 
um, because you have to figure something like this is going to get used a lot. That's very true. But, I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you expand it to say so you can add some meaning like that, mm -hmm. it just becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Well, that is something to start with next time, looking at the time. All right. Um, we have, have some ideas where we're going to go with this. Um, we, oh, this Saturday is our patron stream at yeah. 12. And so we hope to, to see as many of you who can be there, there. Um, and I think we're going to do what was suggested in Discord. I believe we're going to do the Mokuthiju um, with uh, the patrons who are, are there and requesting can get their names specifically added into the language um, to become words in the language. It was, but I, I think the, the rest of it was to type it, see what yeah, they look like. Yeah, that was the main thing, because the font is finally done, so yeah. exciting. Um, anyway, we hope you have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Thursday with David hopefully doing better. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, stay grammar. Bye, everybody.